Ireland itself has a lot of mythology. Whether it's based on the Druid society or it's based on the old warriors, we tend to hold on to these giant stories and, and these fables and myths. I think it's because the Irish really look for a hero. And when we find one, we tend to hold on to it. When we find a good product as well, it's kind of the same thing. We tend to be very proud of it. The Romans originally who came over here and called it Hibernia after spending 12 months here. They were asked what they thought of Ireland and they said Hibernia, which means winter. That's the weather for you, first of all. To do the jobs we do here, you really have to like Irish weather, or at least be able to put up with it, or handle it, or work in it. <laughs> it's a tough job. It's a physical job, you know, so some people it doesn't suit, and some people it does. You never really can tell. Some of the smaller guys who come out are the hardest guys there is, and some of the bigger guys are the softest guys. So we do really try to have a bit of fun during the day and you know have a few jokes and we all try to get on because I think if you didn't get on in a physical job like this it would be a nightmare. Our family moved in 1835 from the west of Ireland down to here and oysters were a food basically of the poor people back in Ireland back in the day because they were cheap. They were grown on the beaches and they weren't expensive because they were free. And there wasn't the prestige about them that there is now. Dad knew about oysters in the bay from his great 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 grandfather and that's why everyone thought he was nuts when he went out to the bay to start growing them again but through the techniques he'd seen in America, through aquaculture, that's how the game changed, you know. He was a farmer, time to farm something different. So you can grow everything if you put your mind to it, you know. Dungarvan, uh, Dungarvan's a great little place. Probably know everybody in the town, because probably one of their families or a cousin of theirs has worked for us over the years. It's a small town, but it used to have about 65 pubs. That's what I love about Dungarvan. But no, 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 it's a good little place. A lot of the businesses that are in there, they're like ourselves. They're there four or five generations. Like my dad remembers doing business with other guys, dads, grandfathers, and you go into town, and it's, there's probably six or eight families where everyone still has their same business, whether it's a hardware store, a pub, a shop for materials for dairy. It's the same guys. We all went to school together. We all party together. So I'll bring you to a bar later. You'll meet another few of them. It'll be good. So small towns, good people. What do you like about Dungarvan? <laughs> I just can't believe that we've got to the level we've got to. We've been very lucky. First of all, we have a terrific site. We know now it's one of the best bays in Europe for producing quality oysters. And they're very young. Ones on my left hands. They're old from March then. March. It's tradition in Ireland, like the farms are handed down. They're not sold, they're handed down from family to family. This particular farm, and my brother's farm, has been handed down generation after generation. Every generation has added a bit onto it. We all stick together, four brothers or sisters, not many places in the country, in the world, you see the whole family working together. So everyone brought their own little skills to the table. We have our marketing degrees and science degrees, but they've all been adapted towards the oyster industry. My mum um, had only one brother when she was growing up, so she really wanted her family to kind of stay together. And she made it a big point when we were growing up that if we could get on with each other, we could work together. So we really kind of pushed that idea that even if you're annoying the hell out of your brother, that you'd still go for a pint at the end of the day, and just talk about it. And it's really held us in good stead um, when you're coming up against international competition. Being Irish means being optimistic, being hardworking, and being as professional as you can in what you do. But even when the tide goes against you, you kind of still have to smile and take it on the chin and fight back. Never give in, <laughs> never give in.